Hey guys, this is Shannon with Black Sheep House. I'm so glad that you joined me today. This is the tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to do this beautiful stained wood top. It's a light brown color, a really beautiful and just a creamy taupe for the base. This dresser is solid cherry. I got it for a steal of a deal for $20. Can you believe that? These are the supplies you're gonna need. Some poly clear coat, some paint of your choice, some sandpaper, the foam roller is optional, paintbrush, a cleaner of some sort, and a sanding sponge. You're gonna start by removing the hardware. I ordered some hardware already on Amazon uh, before I even started this project so that it would get here in time and it is I'll link it below but it's just um, some nice bar pulls that are you know less than a dollar a piece so you can't beat that going to clean the whole piece with simple green you could also use a just like some dawn and water and crud cutter is also a really great um, degreaser you just want to make sure sometimes with dressers like these people have used um, waxes and shiny cleaners um, you know and so there can be bleed through I'm just gonna fill these holes real quick that were from some of the decorative pieces I don't even know what you call those also you can sell your um, hardware on Facebook marketplace after you're done so the vintage stuff sometimes people really want that this is a hack that I use all the time and I figured it was common knowledge, but you never know. Sometimes with the DIY community, um, it, it can get expensive. Sandpaper can, buying all those sand sponges can get expensive. So what I do is rip it into fours and then I wrap it around my sand sponge and I'll just, you know, use that and it works great. I'm the type of person that changes sandpaper very frequently, and I recommend that you do as well. It just is inexpensive, and it will save you so much time. I'm sanding this by hand because I wanted to make this DIY tutorial very beginner-friendly, but you could also use um, a power sander, orbital sander. Those are readily found and very affordable at Home Depot. I started out with 80 grit and then I smoothed everything over with a 220 grit. This took me about an hour to sand the whole top, but it was a very strong top coat that was on this dresser. Like I said, it was a really well-made dresser, so whew, it took me a minute. <laughs> but look at that beautiful wood underneath. Really happy with um, how pretty that wood is, but it definitely has a orange red tone to it. Now, I have a video on bleaching wood if you want to go that route, but all I'm going to do for this, because I'm going brown afterwards, is give it a nice white stain just to give me a base to work from. I've used this white stain. You guys have seen me use this if you watch any of my other videos so frequently, and I literally still have this can, and I have done so many dressers with it and um, tabletops and all sorts of stuff. So it's called Whitewash Pickling. Um, stain by Minwax. I think they've actually changed the name and it's just whitewash now, but any whitewash should um, get you there. So whether you're going to Home Depot or ordering off Amazon or if you're at Walmart or whatever, just look for a nice whitewash. That's going to cancel out a lot of those red tones that are screaming through. So I just wipe it on a good amount of it, let it soak in a little bit, and then smooth everything out. While that's drying, I'm going to start with my paint. I'm using chalk paint. This is um, very beginner friendly and you don't need a primer when you're using chalk paint. But if you're going to just use regular house paint or something, I would recommend using a primer first like Zinsser 123 primer. I did lightly scuff sand the entire dresser also. I didn't film that, but after I cleaned it, I did give it a little bit of a scuff sand. Nothing too much because sometimes if you over sand, that's going to cause bleed through. So super light sand, nothing that would even go past the, um, you know, the protective coat that's already on there. This roller technique is optional. I usually use it on my base coat. It just makes sure everything is nice and smooth and I don't have any drips. But again, that's really optional. 
it helps a little bit with coverage, but I don't use it usually on the final coat with um, chalk paint. I'll just brush it. This is definitely going to need two coats of paint, maybe three in some spots because it is a, you know, we're going from a dark color to a light. But I will worry about that second coat um, while I'm waiting for the top tray. Oh, this is a hack that I use a lot. I just have a couple screws in my pocket and I can open the drawers and close them. For the sake of YouTube, I just did everything with the drawers in, but you would certainly have probably an easier time taking the drawers out and setting them all on the ground and painting the drawers and the base separately. But this is Valspar Antiquing Glaze. You can find it at Lowe's or online. It's a water-based, um, sort of like a fake stain, you know. You can use it over top of uh, wood. You can use it over top of paint. It's water-based, really easy to clean up. Very beginner friendly. Nice brown color. And if you just tried to use just the Valspar um, antiquing glaze on top of that raw wood that I had earlier, it wouldn't even show up. It would be the most ugly thing ever. So you've got to use that whitewash first to create the base. And then you can go through with your stain. I always, always use a whitewash and then I stain. Because so many of these woods that I'm refinishing are red toned woods. And so that is not the look I'm going for. So I always want to cancel out that red tone. And the whitewash really does that for you. Now we're going to wait for this to dry. Oh yeah, like and subscribe and comment. Uh, while you're waiting comment to me what you guys want me to do videos on in the future i'm really curious especially if you're a subscriber uh, i'm super curious what you guys are interested in seeing i have been refinishing furniture for a long time and there's a lot of things that i can share so let me know i also really like diy stuff decor stuff so there might be some videos like that coming out this is a polycrylic top coat. It is, I think it's by Verithane, but any polycrylic top coat is going to work. It's a water-based top coat and a, um, it's in a matte finish. I always pick matte finish because it's very forgiving and just goes with the style of stuff that I do. First things first, you just want to get the poly on there and then you'll smooth from side to side so you can see that my my brush is really loaded up and my goal is just to get it on and then I'm going to go through and smooth it all out I work in sections like small boards of wood I imagine like planks of wood and then I go from one end to the other now you're going to see on the edges that it's like starting to drip or pool up. Don't worry about the edges. Leave those for dead last because the top of your dresser is really the part that's going to make it look like a professionally done piece. So you want to get those nice long strokes. And again, you can see that pooling up on the edges. I'm waiting to clean that up until dead last because I want to focus on my dresser top. It'd be real easy to um, sand the edges if something, if there was a little mistake or something like that. Um, it's not easy to go in and fix the top of your dresser if there's a, a weird spot. So... You really want to focus on, or if you're doing a tabletop or something, you really want to focus on the top and make that really smooth. See all that that I left? It might be, if you have OCD, it might drive you crazy, but got to wait until dead last to clean that up. So there it is, all 
finished and I just need to wait for it to dry. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to be applying some clear wax from Bare. You can find it at Home Depot, but any clear wax will do. Or if you just want to use the poly acrylic that you were already using um, in the beginning, that's going to be, especially if you're just buying products for this specific um, makeover, then I would just use poly acrylic. It's really durable. But I had, I had some wax on hand and just decided to throw in an extra technique in the video in case you guys want to learn. So I use a lint-free microfiber cloth to apply my wax. I just dip it in and then wipe it all around. I sometimes get asked, do you buff the wax? Um, and the answer for me is no, I don't buff the wax. I never go back and buff it. <laughs> I just let it dry and it usually looks good. Yeah, not usually. It always looks great and I don't ever feel the need to to buff it. But I think if you do buff wax, it gets shinier. So if that's what you're going for. So anyway, I just wipe this on and it's going to give the drawer some durability. Here's that hardware that I found on Amazon. I will link it below. And we're just going to install this. And ta-da, our makeover is complete. This is how it turned out. And um, if you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments. I respond to like every single one. Um, you can follow me on Instagram. Black Sheep House is the name. And thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys.